Hello and welcome to Retronator Pixel Art News for September. Today we're gonna look at upcoming and newly released games. We're gonna have a special feature on comics and today's theme in the do-it-yourself section is dithering. Welcome to Pixel Art Academy. Oh, it's not Pixel Art Academy. You see, I already fucked up. Hello and welcome everyone. How are you doing? I'm Matejan, also known as Retro, also known as to my friends Redbeard. How do you like my t-shirt today? It's a Nintendo homage by Game & Graphics. Oh, look, there's an SNES there. But first, we're gonna go look at some world news. Today we bring you news from the world of pixel art in a segment I call the War of the Pixel. On one side we have the pure blood pixels and on the other side the new progressive liberal piece of transparent shading gradient stuff. The latest attack of the non-pixel art elements as they call them has happened on Reddit. On the Reddit continent the nation of r slash pixel art has been invaded by non-pixel art Newcomers use things that are called dirty tools, such as gradients and drop shadows and reflections. These newcomers are coming from more liberal parts as Twitter and DeviantArt, where pretty much anything can be posted into the pixel art section. And on the other hand, we have more conservative places like PixelJoint that have defined what NPA means in the first place. The more conservative citizens have pushed back, asking if there are any regulations in place to decide which kind of pixels are going to be allowed entry into the country and which one not. Only one member of the government showed up to the discussion saying that our pixel art should be only for pure blood pixel art. Pure bloods, pure bloods like in the Harry Potter. But past discussions have shown that the opinions on this matter are very mixed and so as he is one of the new representatives of the government, he has no power to instill something like that. And just like that, we have one more discussion about what is pixel art and what is and what should we show and what not. And nothing really changed, so we're gonna just move on to lighter topics, particularly upcoming games. We're going to start with Omega Strike, that has the music that you've been just listening in the whole previous segment. It is a metroidvania game with a vast open-ended world and multiplayer playable characters. In the game we're going to explore the world, learn new abilities, upgrade our weapons and defeat Dr. Omega and his mutant armies. Omega Strike is coming out on October 4th, which is like tomorrow. Even before that, on October 3rd, we are going to get the game called Let Them Come. And I had a lot of fun playing this one at Game Developers Conference. It's an arcade game where the enemies are coming from one side and we much just have I mean, machine gun and upgradable weapons and the enemies are definitely going to overwhelm you but you will get money for new upgrades which will enable you to survive through the next wave of enemies and keep on going keep on going october 3rd let him come remember Arduboy, the arduino powered gaming system the size of a credit card well its developer Cameron Bates is back on kickstarter with a game for Arduboy called art adventure an 8-bit rpg for your wallet and it's this really cool pixel art black and white adventure a la Zelda with world be even bigger than Zelda. The Ardu Boy itself earned almost half a million dollars and I'm pretty sure that Ardu Venture is gonna be an amazing project as well. Last of the upcoming games, we're gonna look at Graveyard Keeper, which is supposed to come in this fall. It comes from the developers of Punch Club and Punch Club was one of my favorite kind of grindy games, uh, whereas Graveyard Keeper is called the most inaccurate medieval cemetery management sim. I really like the artist on the project shows uh, work in progress stuff so you can see how for example he got here from a sketch to a digital sketch to the finished pixel art assets. So I'm super excited what these guys have in order for us and yeah we're gonna play it in 2017. New releases we're gonna start with the game that we mentioned already in the previous episode. Songbringer came out two positive reviews I played it quite a lot and it's very Zelda-ish, uh, dungeon crawling. I love the atmosphere of the game. Songbringer is available for $20. Another game we mentioned already last time is Fugle, which came out to early access actually. It's available for Windows and Mac at $10. Yeah, it's, a, it's really cool, meditative, flying around as a bird in voxel landscape, beautiful stuff. Timbleweed Park is a game from March this year, so half a year old, but it finally came out on Nintendo Switch, as well as iOS. If you haven't played this amazing adventure game from the guy who invented point-and-click adventures, Ron Gilbert, go check out Timbleweed Park on Switch for $20 or iOS for $10. 
Speaking of cool adventure games, The Witch's Isle is an adventure game that takes place in a dreamlike town on a solitary island. It's very unique and artsy and all that stuff, people saying good stuff about it. It's available for Mac and Windows for only $3. An upgraded version of the game Hydora has been released. Super Hydora is a non-linear horizontal shoot 'em up designed to offer a challenging experience, sublimating the richness of traditional shmup classics. It's available for Windows only at $12. When was the last time you played a pixel art real-time strategy? Well, now you can with Tooth and Tail from the wonderful developer Pocket Watch Games. Tooth and Tail is a real-time strategy game featuring single-player online competitive play, split-screen replays and more. Build a base, lead your army, eat your enemies, because every unit is an animal, like skunks and owls. Tooth and Tail has a massive 560 very positive reviews in these two or three weeks it's been out and is available for Mac and Windows at $20. Game of the Month the one and only Octavio Navarro, also known as Pixels Ha, huh, that we all love for his illustrations, comes to us with a point-and-click adventure game called Midnight Scenes. It's actually a series, we're gonna see the first one right now, it's called The Highway. It's a free game, it's quite short and I really love the format because it's something that when you see the game you just download it and play it and you're done in like 15 minutes. It has this cool black and white vibe that's a lot like the Twilight Zone. It's this small little mystery and it's just the most wonderful thing. And he said that he's gonna make at least two more. It's going to be a trilogy and then he's gonna see if he wants to do more in this series or do other stuff. And that's it for September's games. Let's move on to music. Pain Perdue's debut album or EP just got released on the net label Cheap Beats. And we're gonna be listening to their album in some of the backgrounds. And yeah, you can get their album from Bandcamp for pay what you want price. Isn't that nice? And from cheap beats we go into random bits of news. Nintendo released their Super Nintendo Entertainment System Classic Edition, which is like a palm-sized version of SNES. It's real hardware and comes with 21 pre-installed games. You have your Contra, Donkey Kong Country, The Legend of Zelda, Star Fox, and even an unreleased Star Fox 2 that is specially just in this console and it's only $80 which a lot of people say is worth it just for the games alone and here you actually get hardware so good job Nintendo now you're playing with power super power and while we're on the topic of hardware the designer of ZX Spectrum Max has showed a final layout or at least the latest one of the keyboard look at this beauty of British design and we can also see how the keyboard is laid out with the directional keys actually matching what we're used to from PC keyboards and I'm looking forward to seeing this device in my hands one day maybe I didn't have enough money to pre-order it so I'm hoping that once I get rich and famous there will be still some ZX Spectrum next available because I love ZX Spectrum. Another piece of news that doesn't fit into other section is this music video created by Baby Duca. He made an Orwellian pixel art piece for the song 1982 by the Danish and Finnish band Lima from the album that's also called 1982. It's a neat little piece, uh, nothing flashy, but it matches the song perfectly. Good job, Baby Duca. We like music videos in pixel art. We're gonna close off Random Beats with a shout out to Penny Design. He makes fake let's plays of bad retro video game tie-ins that were clearly rushed, share very little of the storyline and completely misunderstand the source material. In the case of Stranger Things, it's not even that bad if you ask me, just a bit in genre frustrating. The pixel art looks great and my love for the TV show would easily blind me into playing the shit out of this back in 1988. Penny Design's other creations shine a truer light at shoddy licensed games. For example, you'll die plenty of times in Gravity. Rogue One becomes a resort tycoon instead of an action game. And for his latest work that came out in September, Penny Design ties into the rekindled IT by Stephen King. Marketed to children, IT, the hide and seek adventure, was a glitchy mess, butchered King's material and suffered from rushed development to meet a Christmas deadline. Hashtag IT movie. This is so fantastic. Thank you for making this. And now for a special, special feature this month, we're gonna look at pixel art comics. 
We're gonna start off with Diesel Sweeties that's been going since pretty much forever actually now it's been going on since 2000 and it's done by Richard Stevens III and it's a comic in four panels which is pretty funny and has cats and stormtroopers. I also wanted to mention Rich Stevens because he's also posting comics about Apple stuff on the page iMore. For example, you can see his take on the Apple Watch. Next up we have Hero on Hero by Neoris. Hero on Hero started in a fantasy setting with a lot of characters and dialogue, but has been actually going for a long, 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 long time. We are almost at episode 1000. A new page of Hero on Hero comes out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you can support Guido on his Patreon page. The problem with all these comics that have been going since forever is that it's kind of overwhelming to get started. So how about a comic that just started coming out? It's called No XP. It happens in the world of Questria and it has really really cool pixel art and pays homage to a lot of video games. The artist Pixel Art is also on Patreon, so check out his comic and give him some support. The last comic we're going to feature is not actually pixel art comic, but I could not not mention it. It's called Basic Comic and it features a robot that's actually programmed with the ZX81 and look there's even ZX Spectrum color clash and all that stuff and that's it for the comics I hope you like the special feature it's kind of like something that I might do a little bit different every time let me know in the comments or at Retronator and all that stuff and yeah and now let's go into pixel art as always we're gonna start on pixel joint where in September we receive the previous months top pixel works so we're looking at August 2017 top 10 pixel artworks I absolutely love this one it's Matis welcome to pixel art by Flea 2003 pixel carrier by Tomic look at these gorgeous colors of the sky Terror Misu shows a very very fluid animation called Plague Rat in third place artwork from the game Bunker this one is so big and awesome I have to scroll down course by yes I do. In second place, new Tristram mock-up by Bruloff. And on top of August's pixel art on pixel joint, it's Skittle with his work Bullshit Shrine Thing. Today I wanted to show you another cool place where you can get pixel arts. And it's the Tig Source which used to be one of the most popular blogs about indie games. And in the art section you will find a thread called show us some of your pixel works Tick Forums is mostly a game development forum, so these are a lot of these works are going to come from pixel art games. But as you know, pixel artists always like to just do fun stuff as well for the sake of it. So yeah, this is forums.tigsource.com, a really cool place for the pixel arts. And now it's time for my favorite do-it-yourself section. Oh, but what am I doing on Steam? We've already talked about games that came out. Well, I didn't mention one game last time. It actually came out on August 31st, so I didn't include it this time, but I'm gonna mention it here. It's called Bannerman, and it's an atmospheric medieval action adventure with a focus on historically accurate combat. And why I wanted to mention it now is because in today's DIY section, we're going to talk about dithering. And it turns out that the developer of Bannerman actually made a pretty cool video about it. So yeah, he talks about why we use dithering, how to use it, gives examples from video games. It's kind of pretty cool. So start off with this video on the topic. And next up, you can check out one of my own videos, actually. I made a video about this technique called HD index painting. In it, I explain how I did my artwork called Illustrator with this technique that allows you to use the stylus and pressure sensitivity to just kind of paint dithering. I learned this technique from Dan Fessler, who actually showed us on Twitter a couple of other techniques he uses for making dithered patterns with using just brush strokes. And his technique is called HD index painting because it's kind of an emulation of how old software used index painting where you would create a palette for your artwork and it could make dithering for you. And the closest you can get to a tool like that today is ProMotion NG. It just so happens that ProMotion NG came out on Steam only a week ago. And you can see here, it's used by all these different professional companies. It has all these features you would expect from tile maps and dithering and index painting, as we mentioned, and more and more and more. So definitely, if you are into this kind of stuff, check out ProMotion NG. 
We're almost at the end of the show. We always close out do it yourself with some ideas what you might want to work on. And since this is the last of September, do you know what day is tomorrow? It's October. And in October, we get Octobit. Just like all the cool kids on Instagram have Inktober, Bruno Moraes came up with Octobit. So let's do pixel art every day for the month of October. And this month, he's actually made two sets of themes, cute and not cute. So here's a cool set of themes for the month of October. See if you can do pixel art every day. That's a cool challenge, it's only, it's only 31 days, it's not impossible. And with that, this show is over, it's bright outside. Also let me know, some people have mentioned that I speak a little bit fast, so I slowed it down a little bit for this video. Let me know in the comments uh, which one do you like more. Also remember you can support this show on Patreon. And if you like the video, definitely thumbs up and sharing helps a lot. Thank you very much uh, for being in the Pixel Art video show, Retronator News and Pixel Art. I will see you in one month.